Well, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me. You're doing well today? Fantastic. How about you? I am doing okay. So um, as we begin, I, I really wanted to take a moment just to show you something. Um, my son is a humongous Wipeout fan. Can you see this picture? Is this showing for you? <laughs> so he was I love it. less than three months old here. And this was his, we, we, he grew up near Disney World, but this is actually the first Disney character or the first character of any kind he ever met was Balsy. So that's really proud funny. Of that. <laughs> and, like, just, and, it, and it looks like a particularly lopsided Balsy. <laughs> They came to Walt Disney World to do where guests could uh, run through it. And so he, but it must have made an impression because he's still a huge Wipeout fan to this day. He's 12 years old now. So awesome. Um, so uh, he watched it, of course, on ABC, mostly watched it on YouTube, as I'm sure you hear from a lot of kids these days. Uh, why the return now to TBS? You know, I think that YouTube actually is a very important part of, of the why the return to TBS. We left the air six, seven years ago, but we really never actually left the air because the clips uh, lived on, on on YouTube and Instagram and, and TikTok and other social media. And uh, that continued to grow and grow. And so we had our original fans that were able to keep sort of, you know, getting their appetite fed of, of wipeouts. But then we started to attract new fans that had maybe never seen the show, but they were seeing these hilarious clips. So it really wasn't a matter of if the show will come back. It was a matter of when it's going to come back. And um, Corey Henson and TBS were wise enough to be the ones to say, hey, this is the right brand for us because TBS is all about comedy. Uh, yeah. And they brought it back and, and uh, it, you know, it's come back in a huge way. So we're very excited. Um, can you talk about some of the changes, maybe particularly the hosts? Um, John and John were so um, iconic for this show and now a completely different direction. Can you talk about that decision and what um, John and Nicole bring? Sure. So, you know, obviously John, uh, John and John, the original John and Johns were <laughs> awesome and we loved them. There was a feeling that we wanted to change up the show and we wanted to bring it back and have it be different and fresh. So uh, we went after some pretty big A-list celebrities with John Cena and Nicole Byer and then um, Camille Kostek also. Um, and it has, you know, it's very interesting seeing it through a different person's eyes because that's really what this show is all about, right? It's about, even as an audience member, you're living vicariously through the contestants and through the hosts. And so to see different people react to it because, you know, the, the hosts are the face of the show, it's, it, it gives a whole new patina to, to a show that you've seen before. So you still have the great nostalgia of, of Wipeout and, and seeing the great Wipeouts. But now we have these awesome hosts that come in with the, you know, a great comedic sensibility that's very different than what we've seen before. And, and it makes it for fun viewing. Do you think the move to having the host actually be at the location live as opposed to uh, the green screen makes a big difference as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, in the past, the hosts were not live other than, um, you know, Jill Wagner was live, but the, the main hosts uh, were on green screen. Uh, and so this time around, we said, you know, if we're going to have John Cena and Nicole Byer and have these A-list celebrities, let's get them out there as much as we can. Unfortunately, because they are so busy and they're, you know, off shooting movies and television series, it's hard to get them for the entire run. I mean, I would love it if they were live in the field every single day of the shoot, but that would be a, a pretty big commitment. So they're there for the wipeout zones uh, and, and the energy uh, uh, and the feedback that they're giving to the contestants and the feedback that they're getting back, that instant feedback is really awesome. Uh, and again, if we could do it every day, we would. It's just tough with their schedules. Sure. John's got some wrestling to do. I love Nicole, by the way. I, I discovered her on Nailed It on Netflix and her personality is sparkling. So she's a lot of fun. Um, can you go back a little bit? How did Wipeout come to be? What were your inspirations for it? I mean, it's such a wacky show. How did this come from your mind? <laughs> right. So you might recall that uh, I was the showrunner uh, and executive producer on Fear Factor. And, um, you know, which is also a very big, crazy, wacky show. Yes. <laughs> Before that, I also was a showrunner on The Real World. And I did The Real World Road Rules Challenges. Um, which were, you know, some of the very first big competitive reality shows out there. Uh, and then I also did uh, Doggy Dog and um, which, you know, which, is a, which was a water-based challenge show. And so when you take all of that experience and coming out of 
seven seasons of Fear Factor. We said, you know, this is a great family show, Fear Factor. Um, how, but one of the things we always hear about Fear Factor is, oh, it's so gross, it's so gross, it's so gross. Although that seems to be what people love, but we hear a lot of that. <laughs> we said, well, how can we do a show that has all the fun of Fear Factor without the gross? And then we came up with Wipeout. Okay. Um, and I know it's, it's made its way around the world, of course. Does every country kind of have its different take on it? And if so, is there any that stick out in your mind as I, I like what that country is doing with Wipeout? Yeah, it's really interesting. So um, when Wipeout was in its heyday, we opened up in Argentina, uh, a huge facility where we could run multiple countries through at one time. And so we could actually have two countries running as with two separate courses. So you could have two countries running in the daytime and then at nighttime, two different countries running at night. So you could just churn them through. Uh, and every country, even though they were using the same obstacles, they have their their viewers have different taste and how they watch television. Um, we tend to be the American viewer. Uh, I think has a slightly um, smaller attention span, so things <laughs> tend to be a lot faster. Some of the foreign countries would really drag it out. Every contestant you'd see their full run, whether it was interesting or not. And one of the things that we discovered early on with Wipeout is you know, we can do montages. So we can show a little bit of your run, a lot of someone else's run, and a little bit of another run. And we're only showing the best of the best moments. We don't want the audience ever getting bored. What I found is that some of these other countries, they don't care. They'll just, they'll do 90 minute episodes of the same course that we're doing in 44 minutes. They're doing a full 90 minutes and they will show every run. And to me, I actually found that a little bit boring, but, but uh, you know, I understand that there are different tastes with different viewers in different parts of the world. So if it works for them, then so be it. So in some places, Wipeout is truly just a sporting event where you sit down and you watch the entire thing and then you have a winner at the end. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, for us, it absolutely is. It's sort of what is that balance between athleticism and humor? Um, and, and, we're, and, and it is a fine balance because we want it to be an athletic competition, but we also want it to be funny. Speaking of funny, we are currently casting the show right now um, for the next season. Uh, and so we're looking for people, we're looking for couples uh, and they can be uh, husband and wife, they can be siblings, they can be you know, boss, employee, you name it. As long as you have some connection to someone else and you have a big personality, we want you to come and apply. Uh, we want you to come to wipeoutcasting.com to apply. Because of COVID, the, the casting system has become streamlined and it's a lot easier. It used to be pre-COVID, you would apply online, then you'd have to go and actually sit in a waiting room and do an interview. Now you apply online, it takes a few minutes, we'll set a Zoom time. You and your partner don't even need to be in the same city for this uh, and we'll do a quick interview and that's it. It's a really simple process. So I encourage anyone that's got a big personality and, and just wants to have fun, maybe wants to win a big prize, maybe wants to prove something or just have a fun experience. They should go to wipeoutcasting.com. Um, thank you for that. That was actually going to be my next question. What makes, especially looking at all these years you've been doing this, if you can look back, what makes a great wipeout contestant? You know, what makes our show unique versus any other athletic competition is that I always say that this is the world's largest obstacle course designed for people that have no business being on an obstacle course. That's what makes a good contestant. We're not looking for the Uber athlete. Now, if you are an Uber athlete, that doesn't mean you won't get on the show because, you know, we do want a mix of people, but you don't need to be. You could be a grandmother. You could be, you know, you could be someone that's never done a mud race before. You can be someone that's never been athletic before. Come on just to have a good time. Some people come on because they're, they are on to win it. And some people come on just because they want to have a good time. Um, what makes a great contestant for me, it, it is the big personalities. It's the people that are going to stick out because, you know, we have 44 minutes and we have 20 people running the course in that short amount of time. And they, I find as a viewer, those people can kind of tend to blend together. If you're watching, you know, uh, just a typical, let's say ninja, a typical um, athletic event, they're all athletic. They've all trained for this their whole life. They all sort of start to feel the same. But on our show, it's like, oh, that's the crazy cowboy. Uh, that's the, you know, that's the weightlifter whose muscles are way too big. You know, is he ever going to make it through? Uh, those are the sorority girls, um, you know, they, the spoiled sorority girls. And so you start to, we come up with brands for each person so that you can 
sort of remember them in this short amount of time. And, and, and that's where the big personalities come, come through and are able to shine. Do you enjoy doing the courses yourself? Uh, no, <laughs> I've never done it. Um, and there's a reason for it. I do not want to be ridiculed by my entire crew. I think they would love to watch me do it. Now, back in the day when I did Fear Factor, um, which was not about wiping out, that was about, you know, um, walking on the wing of an airplane or uh, flipping a moving car. Yes, that I would do and I would test uh, because every, which brings up, you know, an interesting subject. Every obstacle on our show is uh, tested over and over and over again. And so first we test it with a team that we call the black and blues. And this is a team of young people. And all they do all day long is they test obstacle after obstacle after, and we just, just annihilate them all day long, hence the black and blues. Uh, and then once we know through them that, okay, this is, this is safe uh, and it can be done. Now we have to test how the game will really work because the black and blues they're Uber athletes. There's no surprises for them. They know what's coming. So then we bring in volunteers and those are typically volunteers from the crew uh, or they're friends of the crew. And so those volunteers, we have to pay them a little bit of money, but they come, they've never seen the course and they run it like a real contestant. So uh, that would be an opportunity for someone like me to try it out, but no, it's, it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> that is just a great answer. Um, and do you have any particular obstacles not to do, obviously, but uh, just to watch that you're like, I'm so proud that our team came up with that one. That is brilliant. Well, you know, it, it's if you look at all the obstacles we've ever done and it's constantly evolving and changing, there's one obstacle that has stayed there from day one and that's the big balls. So if you've never seen the show, imagine four giant red inflated balls that are probably, you know, 10 feet tall each. And you just have to run and jump across each of the balls. And we thought it was going to be on the show for a couple episodes, but there's just something about the big balls that every, it's like a fingerprint or a snowflake. Every single wipeout on the big balls is unique and different. You can never replicate the exact same wipeout. So I love the big balls for sure. Uh, you can quote me on that. And um, I also love the surprise elements. Right. So yes. <laughs> there's a lot of things where you're running along and you think that you have to jump over this gap. And so you're paying such close attention to the gap that you have to run and jump over that you're not paying attention to the wall that opens up in front of you and smacks you into the water. So I like the element of surprise. I think that that's always fun for the audience. Um, it looks horribly painful, but everything's <laughs> super padded. You know, I just got off right before this. We, I just got off a, a, a challenge meeting where they go into great detail about baffling and medical foam. Medical foam is this kind of foam that we use to, to pad stuff and baffling the way that, you know, you would think, oh, they just put a pillow under there and wrap it in some vinyl. No, it's, you know, it's baffled. So it'll be a layer and then another layer and then another layer. And it, it makes it so that it absorbs the impact. It's, you know, there's, some, there's engineering that goes into each of these impacts <laughs> to make it look outrageous, but yet still remain safe. Yeah, I wish my son would understand that instead of trying to get me to do all this crazy stuff and get my <laughs> um, Let's see. I, I was going to ask you about the obstacles and, you know, testing them. So I'm really glad, glad you brought that up. Um, as you said earlier, it's, this is huge on YouTube. Are you kind of, are you proud of that? Not only in people creating montages and stuff, but people are making wipeouts in their own backyard and bringing their neighbors over and all of that. So my goal in life as a producer is that when I go on vacation and some stranger says, what do you do that whatever show I'm doing at the time, they actually go, oh, I know that show and Wipeout is definitely one of those. And so I love that. And, and that comes from, from social media, from, from, well, first of all, we've been around for many, many, many years now. And, you know, we've just shot our eighth season and, and hopefully we'll be, um, you know, shooting our, we'll be shooting our uh, ninth season quite soon. So um, that, uh, it, to me, and, and it's probably a little bit vain of me, but I, you know, I don't want to work on a show that no one's ever heard of. And Wipeout and Fear Factor are two shows that it seems like everyone's heard of or seen it or, or their kids have shown some clip on YouTube. Well, um, I don't do a lot of interviews here for Laughing Place, but I particularly wanted to do this one because I wanted to thank you personally for creating Wipeout. As I said, my son loves this show. He makes me watch it whether I want to or not. He loves to build Wipeout in the backyard. He loves to build Wipeout out of Lego and film it. So um, for 12 years of entertainment for my son, thank you very much. And thanks for your time today. Thank you. I appreciate it.